horror show, Extreme Rules. I'm coming for Bailey. I'm coming for that SmackDown Women's Championship, Rick. Hey everyone, this is uh, Rick Uccino here for Sports Kita, and if you have paid any amount of attention to WWE in recent weeks, you will have noticed that the women's division absolutely crushing it right now, and they have been for some time. You have the likes of Bailey, Sasha Banks, Asuka. They have been getting plenty of praise for their work recently, and deservedly so. But I'm here today to, to spread the love a little bit to someone who I believe deserves just as much praise. She is the future SmackDown Women's Champion, Nikki Cross. Nikki, it is a pleasure to talk to you today. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, and thank you very much for that. That's a very awesome introduction. I very much appreciate that, Rick. <laughs> not, not a problem. I have a little bit of experience with the introductions, and, and I'm, not, I'm not just being kind either. I, I genuinely smile every time you are on the screen you just you you seem to have found this perfect balance of of comedy and, and crazy and you also know when it's time to <laughs> to get serious and, and and get to fighting you know we still see elements of that that nxt nikki from time to time but your character's definitely evolved over the last few months um kind of just take me through that that creative process what has it been like for uh for you over these last few months and, and the changes that you've made to your character Thank you, Rick. For, for myself, um, and I think you're absolutely right, I think fans are seeing, you know, they see flashes of the NXT wild and erratic and reckless Nikki, and then I think they also see, I think they, they're seeing a lot of, but creatively, they're seeing a lot of, um, they're seeing a lot of my real personality, like I think they're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of things, and a lot of the things I say and a lot of the ways I act, like, that's very much Nikki that you'll see backstage or a Nikki you'll see outside of WWE. So for myself, it was just bringing more elements of that in. And it was, it sounds kind of, you know, a, a little cheesy, but it was very much like, okay, um, I'm going to be myself here. How would Nikki really act in this situation? You know, in terms of, to your point, Rick, when you were saying, you know, you know when it's time to get serious and when it's time to fight and when it's time, you know, for, for, for laughing and smiling. And um, and I think it's just always in the back of my head, okay, how would Nikki actually feel about this? How would I actually feel about it? And I think it's just bringing in that real, those real elements of myself and just really being myself. Um, and I think the, the result has been, you know, I think people have liked that and I've always said this, um, if I can make one person smile, Rick, um, then I feel like I'm doing my job. Um, and for me, it's, it's actually been nice to bring a lot of the, I'm very hyperactive. I used to, you know, when I was in school, I would always get into trouble for being too hyperactive <laughs> and too talkative. <laughs> so the thing that used to get me, uh, the thing that used to get me kicked out of the classroom is now actually something that's um, been, it's been uh, a part of my on-screen, uh, you know, character and, um, and I think it's really, I think a part of uh, character and, you know, the, the larger than life roles that we play on WWE television, um, I think it's important for it to have layers um, because, you know, I think people and, you know, human beings, like we're also, we're very layered, um, you know, and there's different aspects of everyone's personalities. And, and I think that I'm just enjoying exploring that. And I'm, I like the fact that I can kind of take people on a journey with me. Um, and just being able to, like, you know, take that journey with the WWE universe and our fans. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you you, you mention making people smile. I, I I will tell you this: every time you're on the commentary table, especially. Um, I'm I'm dying laughing. Like, no no disrespect to Michael Cole, Corey Graves, or Samoa Joe, or anybody else at that desk, but but you and Oscar might be the most entertaining commentators the company has. Um, do you have a sense of of what you're going to do ahead of time when you go out there, or do you just go out there and and, and do things with with the main goal, of course, being to uh, agitate Michael Cole? That is. So honestly, for me, I give um I don't really I don't give a lot of. Well, like, I, for me, I just let it be me because, you know, I remember the first time I ever did commentary, Rick, it was Alexa was competing against Asuka in the lead up to WrestleMania. And I got this text saying, hey, we want you to come in and just do the commentary for the match. You know, so I drove there and I get I get there and, you know, Michael Cole was like, you know, please be yourself. Um, don't, um, just, don't, don't, uh, just please be yourself and be free. Feel free to do whatever you want, however you want to, like, you know, sit on the commentary table, do whatever you want, just be your place. Because, you know, obviously they see, everyone sees the way I act backstage and they know, like, I'm very, you know, very loud, they're like a tornado, like little Tasmanian devil. So 
So they were like, you know, Michael was very encouraging and bringing that out. Um, and, you know, he's very nurturing and just made me feel very comfortable. Um, you know, and I'm going to say, and it's said quite a lot, but, you know, Na- Michael Cole's a national, a national treasure and he must be protected at all costs. <laughs> and I think Michael really, I think Michael really encouraging me to um, be myself really going forward after that day. That's when you started seeing a lot more of that personality in the ring um, and backstage interviews and uh, you know, commentary. And, you know, I think, like, Michael Cole was kind of responsible for, um, like, really allowing me that comfort and being myself and allowing me to be free. So, for me, I don't really, I don't, I just, I just let me be me. Like, I don't really, whatever comes out, comes out, like, it's 100% organic and that's, it's authentic and it's, it's a little, you know, it's a little crazy, it's a little wild, but I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> as long as it's, like, real and that's what's important to me, Rick. Yeah, j- just keep jumping up on the table and, uh, you know, uh, you know, yeah. hugging, hugging on Michael Cole. And, yeah, come on. We know Nikki Cross <laughs> wouldn't just sit there politely. She's going to run amok. And it, it's absolutely hilarious uh, uh, when you do it. Uh, coming up uh, this Sunday... <laughs> Coming up this Sunday, you have a, a SmackDown Women's Championship match. We'll get to that in just a moment. But I kind of wanted to focus on the on the women's division as a whole real quick because it is a Women's Evolution Week uh, for WWE. Five years ago, we saw the call-ups of Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks. And, and really, the game was changed forever when it comes to women's wrestling in WWE. Now, you came into the company kind of right as that change was happening. You know, what was it like to, to be on the ground level, so to speak, to see that change? change happening and 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 to get to be a part of that yeah i mean i i entered into wwe well, 2016 was when i moved from um glasgow scotland to, to florida um so that was you know four years ago and i, I think to you to your point i mean every generation of what female superstars they've laid the foundation you know so right for instance when i first started watching wwe it was Lita and Trash, and then you had Vicky James, Victoria. Uh, there was so many, so many women that that laid this foundation. And in every generation after that, um, you know, we had Natalia, Eve Torres, AJ Lee. Like everyone was trying to lay this. Everyone just kept taking the steps forward and building and building and building. And then you, you, you know, five years ago, you had the Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha going up to going to Raw and SmackDown. So there's been so many women, uh, you know, Naomi and Paige, and there, there's a lot of amazing women um, that, you know, I got to watch. And I remember watching Evolution, the first tape of you, and I was at my home in Orlando, Florida, and I remember watching it and being, you know, so happy for the women, but so much want to be a part of it, right? Like, you know, watching it from home, I was like, oh, I really want to be a part of this. And, you know, it, and now, you know, four years later, 2020, um, you know, two-time women's tag team champion and going for this, the SmackDown Women's Championship on Sunday against Bailey. So now we're, you know, I get to be right in the middle of it and it's just a fantastic feeling and it's a very proud feeling and you want to carry on, you know, you want to carry on the work that's been done before you, pay respect to the women of the past, pay respect to the women of the present and then we're trying to pave the way for the future generations. So it's just this, it's just this wonderful journey, um, and I feel very privileged to be a part of it. And at the same time, like you know, I, I know what I can bring to the table. Um, I know I know what I do bring to the table, and it's allowing people to see that unique aspect and that unique element. Um, so it's just it's it's a journey that every single woman, past, present, and future have a say in, have a hand in. Um, and I just I get to work with. The best. I just get to work with these amazing athletes and performers from all over the world, and I just can't think of a better. I can't think of a better, a better job or a better dream to live. You know. Right, and 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 to to expound upon that, if I can, I know you hate them on screen, but what what is it like really <laughs> to get to work with with Bailey and and Sasha Banks, who are both just at the top of their game right now? You know, I think the the fans have been able to see me and Alexa work with uh work and compete with with Sasha and Bailey and you know at the we're always we're always pushing each other we're always pushing to bring out the best in each other you know we're always we're trying to be innovative we're trying to be creative we're trying to just work for us we're telling these stories and we want people to enjoy these stories we want people to tune in we're trying to tell all these different stories um and that for us is the most important thing 
Um, you know, that right now we're telling the story. You know, Sasha and Bailey are on this massive power trip. Me and Alexa, we're trying to get back our WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. I'm going for my first ever uh, SmackDown Women's Championship on pay per view on network on the network and singles competition. Um, so you know, we're trying to take down this power trip. We're trying to um, you know fight for these opportunities. So for, for ourselves, right, we're um, you know I think we bring out the best in each other. Um, and we're pushing each other, and it is a competition in, a, in the way that we, we want to tell the best stories we can. Um, and for the speaking for, you know, for our women and our fans, you know, we're, again, we're asking them to come on this journey with us when you have these four people um, who are very familiar with each other, and it's just very twist and turn. And I think that's exciting. I think that's really exciting. It's exciting as a performer, and I think... It's exciting for the fans, right? You you brought up Alexa Bliss, and I I have to be honest with you, I wasn't quite sure about this this pair up when it first happened, and a lot of that had to do with Alexa's on screen history when it when it comes to friendships. But you two <laughs> have proven to withstood the test of time now, and you know, kind of just looking back on all of your success, two time women's tag team champions, uh, maybe more in the future. You know, what has her partnership and friendship uh, meant to you over these uh, past few months? Well, you know, like I always say, you know, Blissy was a little bit naughty, you know, but, you know, <laughs> um, no, I think we are, I think we're, we're a great friendship and we're a great tag team because I think we, you know, we are kind of odd balls. We are polar opposites and ring, out of ring. Um, but I think we've also, you know, we've had a lot of the same, similar struggles. Um, so I think we're really there for each other and we back each other up and we support one another. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're honest with each other and I think, you know, with Alexa, you know, I always say like Matt, you know, in ring character taught Alexa, you know, the like values of friendship. And I think for Alexa and ring character she's, you know, helped kinda make me focus my energy more because, you know, NXT Nikki was very erratic and very reckless and I still have those elements in me, but Alexa's helped me focus on that. Um and that focus has helped us both, you know, the first ever two-time women tag team champion. Um, and I think with Alexa and myself, you know, there's there's such a pure, there's such a wholesome and pure aspect to our friendship. And I think people, fans, uh, I think they, like, they love seeing that. And I think they like seeing the different aspects of the friendship because, as you can see, it can really, it can tug at your heartstrings. Um, it can make you laugh. It can make you smile. Um, you know, we, when we lost the, the championship, um, you know, that devastated feeling and that heartbreak and the fan, I think anyone watching the home can relate to, you know, can, can relate to that and, you know, ha- it, you know, set back. But then also now you have that journey of going back and getting the, trying to get, trying to win back the women's tag team champions and for myself trying to win the SmackDown Women's Championship. And I think fans can come with us on that journey because they can relate to it suffering setbacks and then clawing back. Um, so I think, you know, we're very much that underdog um, and we push each other and we we want to be the best. We want to be the best. We want to be the best tag team we can be. We want to fight for the tag team division. We want to be the best we can be. Um, so I think that's what makes us a great team. I think that's what makes fans love watching us and we're best friends in ring, out of ring. So for me, it's just this great dynamic that we're just going to keep exploring. And I think that, I, I, again, it's just it's exciting. You know, obviously I wish you and Alexa a lot of success moving forward, but this is uh, all about you this Sunday, the horror show at Extreme Rules. Kind of a cliche question, I know, but what would it be, <laughs> what what would it mean to you to win your first singles championship in WWE this Sunday? You know, Rick, it would mean, it would mean everything. I started training um, when I was 18 years old, um, started in Glasgow, Scotland, uh, worked in England, Wales, Ireland, all over Europe. I went and lived in Japan for, for four months by myself. Um, Travelled, you know, Japan, uh, Canada and America. Uh, literally tried to fight this, for this dream all over the world. Came to WWE four years ago. Um, had my own journey in NXT and coming up to Raw and SmackDown. Um, for me, it would mean, it would mean every, the 12, 13 years of fighting for this. You know, leaving, you know, leaving my family um, in Scotland, you know, I really want to be, you know, win that singles, that singles championship 
and, you know, be able to, you know, show my mum, hi, this is why I moved, this is why I left <laughs> for America, um, you know, and, you know, if I'm not doing this for my family, then, you know, what am I doing this for? Um, so for me, do, you do it for yourself, you do it for your family, you do it for the ones you love, um, and you really want that reward, you want that prize, you want what you fought for, because, you know, that that's what you've sacrificed for, so... Horror show, Extreme Rules. I'm coming for Bailey. I'm coming for that SmackDown Women's Championship, Rick. So she needs to get ready. I am rooting for you. I, I I haven't wanted anybody to win a championship this badly since Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 35. Oh. Nikki, good luck, and I appreciate <laughs> your time today. Thank you very much.